What's happening, family? Welcome back to another episode of Let Us Tell It. I'm one of your hosts, Marcus Tanksley, a.k.a. Tank, and the other host is... Goose, baby. How y'all doing? Already. Hey, if it's your first time tuning in, this is a podcast we do. I was going to say, this is a great day. It is. Uh, <laughs> this is a podcast we do every single week, and, uh, you know, it's called Let Us Tell It. It's coming from the mind and the mouths of two black men. Mm -hmm. We are married. We are. We have children. We are married to black women. Let me read. Yep. Uh, we are uncles. We are brothers. We are friends. We all of that to a bunch of people. Um, and it's called Let Us Tell It. And this is the the, the brain that it's coming from. It's two black men. So Damn right. Yeah, let us tell it. Uh, we usually kick this every week. Kick it off with getting something off our chest. Goose, you mm. got anything you want to get off your chest? I do. Uber drivers, please have some <laughs> air freshener or something in your car. Whew. You driving around, farting in your car all day. It, that fart is that from yesterday? It's yeah, man. It's seeping in your seats. I know, I know you. I know women too. As y'all be thinking, we don't smell it. We smell it. I got in this Uber. Me and Mel got in this Uber after we left uh, to hear his birthday party, and it was like, dude, you been farting in here all night. You ain't had the windows open, nothing. <laughs> and then when he dropped us off, he was like. In case you just want me to come pick you up outside of Uber, here's my car. I was like, huh. Got inside. I was like, get this <laughs> out of here. Stanky booty little boy. Yeah. Had some air fresh and open the window or something. Just don't be engulfed in that. Like, man, it was like a hot box. A fart. Yeah. <laughs> you just baking in it. Man. Crazy. Man, I had Stanky a, booty. I had one situation like that. We took a Uber to the airport one time. It was in a I think we was in a van mm. or a car, I can't remember. Yeah, it was a van. I have a pretty strong stomach. I don't get motion sickness. I don't really like stuff don't bother me at all. Mm. This smell, it wasn't even a strong smell. It was just an odor. Made me so nauseous. I mean it was I remember it was cold outside. I had to crack the window. Cause we was on the four hundred five, I had to crack the window. And he was like, "Why is it cold?" I said, "That ain't bothering you." She, she was like, it's a, "I can smell something, but it's not that bad." This is making me see. She was like, "Nah, you getting car sick?" I ain't never had no type of motion sickness a day in my life. Yeah, this odor is making me nauseous right now. It's bad. Yeah, you need you. Did you did you uh, rate him? Oh, Mel called Uber. I ain't. Rate him. Oh yeah, you got to rate them one star. They gonna ask why. Horrible odor. That remind me, man. What about rating folk? Go ahead, Finn. You 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 finish with your yeah. I'm finished with that. Go ahead. So <clears throat> we we've been really busy, and we've been situating like um, turning um, the workout room into a playroom, taking the uh, treadmill into the garage, doing yeah. all this stuff, and bought the kids bump beds. Right, so. This uh, we got this Peloton treadmill. It shit's heavy, yeah. so I'm moving it by myself. The bed, the bump bed comes in, and Mel's like, "Can you put this together?" I'm like, "Well, I got to move this treadmill." She's like, "Well, I'm gonna get somebody from Thumbtack or yeah. whatever the whatever the is it Reddit? Is. is that the one you was talking about the other day? Reddit, Task Rabbit. Task Rabbit. What's Reddit? Reddit is uh we probably uh, got a brand new dude. It's a platform that you go on just to talk about things and stuff. Oh, like okay, that. nah, that ain't it. Yeah, Tash Rabbit. Tash Rabbit. <clears throat> so I can I can order this guy. He can come here. He's highly rated. He can be here in four hours. No, by four o'clock. It was like two o'clock. I'm like, damn, two hours. Like, she okay. Well, go ahead, cause I ain't got time to do it. But in my mind, I'm like, man, this dude's about to come here, f some up. Yeah. It ain't gonna be done right, and also, I feel some type of way for you to even think about another man coming in this house with some tools. Yeah, damn it. Anyway, he comes to the door. I open. I'm like, "What's up, partner?" <laughs> I'm acting this like this needs to be a sketch. We I'm need to acting make a like sketch out of I'm, this goose. <laughs> I'm acting like I don't even know what he there for. I'm like, "What's up, yeah, partner?" What you want? It's like, "Oh, I'm here." I'm like, "Oh, Oates, Mel, some guy here." <laughs> I just walk off. Goose got Goose is soft. <laughs> <laughs> I just walk off. He come in. So from the garage, I can look down the hall and see who come in the front door. <laughs> I'm in the garage door like, 
Could you imagine doing some work Suckers. in Goose's house, and every time you turn around, you could just see his head and eye peeking around the corner, right. like, what you? <laughs> Look at that. Hey, I'm looking like, let me see what type of tools he got. Like, man, this, he ain't even ready for the job. Yeah. Oh, punk. Got and then, plastic tools over As there. I'm talking this crap, Mel's like, he needs help with the boxes. Put in. I'm like, man. <laughs> Here you go, man. Here you go. Help him He's with like, the thank bed. you, sir. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> matter of fact, this is the same night of the uh, party, the uh, NAACP party. Oh, ours? Yeah. Oh, okay. And um, <clears throat> so I was like, I got to go. I'm not leaving this guy alone with you in here, blase, blase. She was like, I have his ID. Uh, uh, it's, well, who was it? Her and the baby. And she was like, "He, I can, I'll be able to handle myself, blase, blase. I'm like, let me see his ID. So I took a picture of his ID name, all that yeah. stuff. And I, before I left, I put a knife on the couch. I'm like, <laughs> that's for you now. All right. So I come back home. Y'all, the stairs on this bunk bed, going up to the bunk bed, uh -huh. there's, there's doors, like little cubby holes, that's on each stair so you can store things. I grabbed the door and I'm like, Ugh, like I can barely move the yeah. door because the stairs done squish the doors down. Then the hinges are on backwards. You see the screws. Dang. The screws are all messed up. The kids <laughs> going to cut their feet on the screws. Then I go on the side of the bunk bed. The walls for the cubbies aren't even there. They're just Come open. Come on, man. So I go to mail. I'm like, this dude ain't even put this together right. She was like, he left this bag saying these are extra pieces. Nah, it ain't And <laughs> Wayfair usually gives you extra pieces for things. And I'm like, this month then, uh, hey, rate this dude. Yeah. Back to what you said. She was uh -huh. like, oh, I already gave him an excellent rating. Yesterday. Women. <laughs> Yesterday, I went. I had to take I'm the stairs apart. Yeah, take it all the way apart and put them all back together because Man. the hinges were on backwards. The doors. He didn't even put the magnets on the doors so the doors can stay shut. Man, ah, and McKinley's been. just in there like, so why are you doing this? Da, yeah. da, da, da. I'm like, cause this sucker. <laughs> They came in. I was like, don't you ever let any man come in with no tools. McKinley just like, hey, hey, hey. Walk, run off. Yeah, craziness. But anyway, yeah, I was like, I was, I was like, I'm going to get him with the rating. That will piss me off. And this man left. We done, He done got paid full price and got a all-star rating. And he hey, out you there done, just endangering kids. Man, matter of fact. Greg give some kids tetanus shots. Yeah, my kids about to be all screwed up. Foot. Get it screwed up. <laughs> That's good, man. Look at this. Look on the side. Wow. wow. He's literally got the screw coming out the side of the wood. Look at that. That's They stepping on this. Man, I would find that dude. You got his ID. Craziness. Come over and give me my money back. That's, that's one and of the things. And you do this for a living. Yeah. That's one of the things I'm hesitant. Look, I don't need it to. My angle stops so the bathroom, your sink. You know how you can turn it off at the bottom, mm -hmm. up under the sink. That's leaking, and one of my faucets <clears throat> ain't turned. It ain't leaking from that. It's just my, well, I got one of my faucets on my sink. It's constantly dripping. Mm -hmm. So I got to go under there and turn that off mm -hmm. un under the sink. Yep. But I've noticed uh, when I went to look at it to see what the issue was, I know I need to replace that faucet, the handle. Mm -hmm. The little packing thing, the little uh, what, what's it called, goose? The uh, cartridge. Yeah, the cartridge. Got to replace the little cartridge on that, and the um. But I noticed when I turn the turn it off at the bottom, it don't turn all the way. It turns off, but it still drips too. Oh, so man. both of those need to be replaced. I'm capable of doing it. I just don't feel like it. Yeah. And I want to call somebody. I just like, why don't you just call somebody? Do it because they're not gonna do something right. Yep. They're gonna get water all up under the bottom of the sink. I'm gonna be mad. Mm -hmm. You got to protect stuff from water. I want to call somebody, and I'm I'm right there. Like next week is gonna be like, let me just call somebody because I don't feel like doing it. Yeah. I got all this other stuff I'm doing, and so right now all I do is just turn it off at the bottom. Like right now, 
as soon as I brush my teeth, whatever I'm doing, get under the you sink, don't. turn it off, stop the drip. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> but it's, it's to that point now, I'm like, let me just call somebody to do this. Uh, I'll come over and do it, man. Please do. Yeah. Let me get this off my chest real quick. Y'all heard at the top of this uh, episode. First, no, let me not even get into that. Before we started recording just now, Patreon heard about this, but some of y'all hearing this for the first time, and a lot of y'all that commented ain't on our Patreon because you watched it on YouTube for the first time, which is fine. I mm-hmm. get it. Last week, we did an episode. We talked about a man a physically, basically assaulting dang near, if it's physically and mentally abusing his son online. Yep. We talked about, what did we talk, what else we talked about? Talked about uh, you know women proposing, which is not yep. the norm. Women proposing to their to their man, you know, mm-hmm. to get married, which is not the norm. We talked about quite a few interesting, poignant things. Yeah. Just now, right before we came in here to do this episode, I just started. I looked down just to see because we've been meaning to find out. Somebody asked if we're gonna talk about coats. Let us know what you're talking about. Coats, because coats, they said they out of uh, they out of control. Yeah, coats. Like oh oh, oh okay um. The main thing that was commented about in the last episode, after we talked about all of that stuff, parking. Parking. Not not going to an event and parking, but literally parking in your neighborhood. Parking. Just parking. That's what yeah. y'all decided to spend yeah. y'all's time <clears throat> and energy on was parking. We talking about parking? <laughs> Park? That shocked, that blew my mind. I'm expecting somebody like, oh, you know, proposing... You know, a woman, you know, some people did comment on the proposal thing and the man, you know, being abusive or, you know, just his parenting style. Some people, but a majority of it was talking about parking. Now, at the top of this episode, I do a disclaimer, same as I do on every episode we do. Mm-hmm. This is coming from two men. Yes. And everybody that got something to say about disagreeing with the way how we deal with parking in our neighborhood. None of them were men. <laughs> this is co- it's called let us tell it. This is the way, this is the mind of a man. This is how we think. Yep. Men, we protect our house. We protect our surroundings. We make sure and see what's going on. Of course, if somebody's having an event, mm-hmm. they can park in front of the house. Mm-hmm. But in general, if you're going across the street, how you know I ain't got somebody coming over? Do me the courtesy of not parking in front of my house. Two, yes, that's public property, but damn it, it's my property. Because I'm a man, that's how men think. In front of my house, I own too, damn it. <laughs> you saw that same comment. Cause I com- it was the main comment. I, I commented to <laughs> that comment. Did you? I didn't see it. I said, <laughs> she was saying she doesn't see the issue with people parking in front of the house. My neighbor parks in front of my house all the time, especially when they have guests. Duh. <laughs> I know who my neighbor is. Yeah. <laughs> my neighbor can park in front of my house. I know his or her intentions. Like they're not out to get me or they're not surveilling my house, you know. And obviously if they have a get together, it's going to yeah. spill over to across the, you know, to my side. The thing about parking in front of somebody's house I guess we have to sh- literally break it, break it down. A stranger, somebody just randomly parking in front of your house, walking off to two to three houses down the street. And there's open road, driveways, everything down here. Why are you parking in front of my house? Go down there. Don't come up here because you're probably doing something you ain't supposed to be doing. That's why you're <laughs> keeping your car up here so your ass can get your escape or do something matter of fact if you're robbing a house you're not going to park in front of the house you're robbing you're going to park down the street and park right here what's Mm -hmm. up about all right let me go down and rob your neighbor right fast and then i'm gonna run back here so your ring doorbell won't catch me (laughs) robbing your shit this is the mind of a man this is how we think there was a sketch i seen recently it was a dude. He, I think they, well, him and his girlfriend or wife was walking through the airport, mm-hmm. and he's scoping out everybody. He was like, "Oh yeah, okay, yeah, this guy right here. Okay, he's getting a little too close. All right, what, what's he reaching his pocket for? What's he doing? Okay, yep. what's these people over here doing? Okay, the dog, he's sitting in his place. 
That would be going through our mind. Mm -hmm. We scoping out, making sure everything good. Then it can switch over to her thought process. She's, da, 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 yeah, I hope my nails are pretty. <laughs> like, because y'all, that ain't how y'all think. That's nope. how we think. Nope. But anyway, I just thought it was interesting. Again, this is let us tell it. This is coming from the minds of black men, of men, period. Yeah. I guarantee you, if you see, if a man will say, any man that sees that and say, yeah, don't be parking in front of my house, they're going to be like, yeah, don't park in front of my house if you ain't come to see me. <laughs> and let me break it down again because I saw this comment. If you're in a, if you live in an apartment complex, or if you live in like the New York or one of those um, crowded, crowded, cities. yeah, cities where multiple people live in the building, or your houses are terribly close, yeah, other people are gonna park in front of your house because they have no choice but to do right. so. We're talking about, <laughs> I'm talking about Georgia, where the houses are a couple of yards away from each other, yeah. and you deciding to park in front of my or house. Even where we live at, California's crowded. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where we live, we I have space. Ex exactly. <laughs> if I'm cutting my grass, and you park in front of my house, I'm cut. hey, <laughs> can I help you? On that public street. Good. And that person could say, hey, man, this is a public street. Bro, move your car. Across the street, what are you doing? Why would you? I'll be confused why they don't find this uh, confusing. Like, what? My, my boy down the street. What are you doing? He this? lived down the street from me. There was a car that parked in front of their house for like, it was, this was on the second or third day when I seen this car. Mm. I'm like, uh, he was like, man, he, and we I was sitting there and I, his sprinklers came on. Mm. And they started hitting the car, and I was like, hey, your sprinklers turned the wrong way. He was like, I know, I turned them that way. Yeah. He was like, I don't know whose car this is. They parked it there, and it's been there for two days now. Yeah, the street's public, but it's in front of their house. Yeah. Wherever you left, go over there somewhere and park. Anyway, that just, that, that just shocked me. I was just shocked that that was the main comment was park. It's a good topic, I guess. People got different opinions. But <laughs> it was just shocking to me. Men, women, be more vigilant. Vigilant? Diligent? Di no. What is it when you know. visual? Visual. Visualant? Or is it diligent? Visual. I don't visual. know. It, visual. Visual ain't. <laughs> what is it? Uh, what is it? Uh, okay, Kennedy, what is it? Vigilant? Cautious? I don't no, know. No, you got the. What? Well, yes. What's it the word it means being for? aware of your surroundings, but vigilant. Because I don't know what that's I think it's vigilant. It might be. Come on, help me out. Patreon, <laughs> me and my baby do words. Is it vigilant? Week. It's vigilant. Okay, that's a good one. Yeah, okay. In our neighborhood now, on the Ring Doorbell app, there's been break-ins, mm -hmm. right? And what's happening is people are just parking on the street at the top of the street and watching people leave their homes. And it's they're just parked in the car. Yeah. And nobody is approaching them on this public street mm -hmm. like hey what are you doing no one's questioning nobody it's because one nobody's being vigilant mm -hmm. two oh that's a public street they can park that no do you live in this Man. neighborhood what why is why are you parked right here next to my house every day for this pa for the past yeah. week you got to scare people like hey don't you go this house that dude gonna come out every time with his shirt off. Hey man, what's up? Yeah. What's, don't go that way. That's why I'm. I think that's why in the South, or wherever else this may happen, I can only speak for the South. People approach cars because people are just setting up. You don't know what's happening. So my daddy did it. Be I vigilant. It. <laughs> be vigilant, and start asking questions, and you'll see. But most of the time, these guys that be casing our houses to rob them, they park, watch you leave, they come back the next day, man, you leave at the yeah. same time every day, and they park right there watching you, and you just, oh, mm -hmm. na, 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 na. no crazy shit. Hey, what's crazy, this wasn't even a topic that we was going to talk about. I was mm -hmm. just shocked that that was what most of that episode, most of what everybody <laughs> commented. But the first house we got, we uh, bought out here in California. We lived in a cul-de-sac. And it was like a, a street perpendicular, uh, parallel to us that kind of ran perpendicular to our cul-de-sac. Okay. So right, like right next my neighbors beside me, mm -hmm. they lived on the other street. Okay. 
So probably every day, every other day, there would be sometimes the same car, sometimes a different car. It would park not in front of our house, but like across the street, cat a corner. Mm-hmm. Somebody would get out and walk down the street. Mm. And it, I, I always thought it was weird, but they not coming to my house, so whatever. whatever. But I noticed the house that they was going to. On that mm-hmm. street, they was going to the second to last house on the left. Yeah. Every time. I'm like, there's plenty of parking. Yeah. I'm like, those are, that's a drug deal. Yeah. That's definitely a drug deal. Why would you park here, sit in your car for 15, 20 minutes, walk all the way down that way, mm-hmm. and then walk all the way back, and get in your car and leave? This happened for months. Mm-hmm. One day I'm leaving out for work. I see I see a car in front of our house. And then on that street that runs runs parallel to us, I see another a truck, a pickup truck. Mm-hmm. It's two guys in this car, two guys in the truck. Mm-hmm. So I look at them, I let them see that I see them. Mm-hmm. I'm like, that's weird, but whatever. Again, I got my wife in the house, I got my son in the mm-hmm. house. I'm like, so I get in my truck, I pull off. Made a U-turn, came back. What y'all talking about? Uh, what they talking about in here? I saw you laughing. Move your phone away from your package. Who, me? Yeah. Testicle cancer. Oh. Uh-huh. <laughs> Testicular cancer. Anyway, so I leave, and I'm like, nah. <laughs> so I come back, pull in my driveway. <laughs> I walk up to the uh, first car. <laughs> And I'm like, what are you doing here? I knock on the knock on the window. Oh, you asked the car, okay. Yeah, I went and uh, I, I said, what are y'all doing here? He was like, uh, he said, sir, we're, we're undercover. And I was like, what you mean undercover? Mm. He was like, that's all I can tell you at this point. I said, is this truck behind you with y'all? He was like, I'm not at liberty to say. All right, stay right here. Walk to the pickup truck. He sees me because he's looking dead at me. Puts his window down. I'm like, what are you doing? He's like, we're undercover. We're investigating some possible uh, uh, illegal activity in the area. I was like, okay. And I can see the dude in the passenger seat because they can see down the street. Mm. So I can see him. They're looking at me, but he's constantly looking down the street the whole time. I said, are y'all here about drug deals? (laughs) See? And y'all thought. Because then then he he showed me his badge and the other one, he like moves his thing. And I was Uh like. I said, so every day, every other day, there's a car that parks right here. Yeah. Sometimes the same car. <laughs> I yeah. get the whole operation. Yeah. Sometimes a different car, and they walk down the street. I said, this has been going on probably for about eight months. Yeah. I said, and I'm, I'm glad y'all doing this. I appreciate it. They was like, thank you, sir, but we would appreciate it if you just keep get, this get, to yourself. Get the hell on. I said, all right. Get out of here. Walk back. I said, all right, y'all. Good luck. Y'all have a good <laughs> Put it on black. Matter of fact, one was a Camry. License plate number was two three. <laughs> first, hey, first, yeah, he shut y'all up because I know some of y'all probably like you told us a drill, dude. How do you know? I know now, y'all. I, I told, know that. Hey, I called Angel like, hey, you know them car. I said, you know that car, the house I told you about. They they don't found yeah. them. They don't found them. I know some of the <laughs> listeners are probably you tripping. There ain't no drug deal. And, nope. See, nah, there was, was a drug. You deal. could ask Angel about that one. Two, I bet you the police was talking to, to uh to Tank without moving their mouth though. They were like, yeah. Get the hell out yeah. of here. <laughs> no, their windows was dark. Who like, got that? Their windows was like limo black. You could only Get see the hell out. You could only see through the windshield. You stupid. We on the car. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, look. look it's like, why I, the and, biggest and, and, on the block? And I'm over here oh. talking and pointing. He right here, <laughs> and then the dude down the street. <laughs> he just <laughs> take probably the biggest <laughs> in the neighborhood. <laughs> like, God damn. Oh shit! You got a, <laughs> you got you got a pedestrian coming. Hey, stay up off my damn street with that bullshit. Like, Excuse, what you, hey, what anyway, y'all doing? Uh, just Prote- protecting the sun. Get your ass out of here! Yeah. Oh, oh, okay. Now, y'all just visiting. I live here. I want to get this off my chest, <laughs> officer. The second out down to the left with the pink roof. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I know exactly why you here. <laughs> my man, you got to keep two German shepherds in the back yard. <laughs> <laughs> Be careful when you go back there. Then you go this house. <laughs> then you run right to the house. This one, okay. All right, shit. Okay. Hey, nah. Anyway, <laughs> hey, don't let nobody park in front of your house. Parking. Hey, we talk about parking. <laughs> you see what happens? People park in front of your house. That for wasn't a even supposed to be a topic. 
like I said, yeah. I was just shocked that that's what most of the comments were. Uh, moving on. Moving on. All right, moving on. They, they said, now you're self-conscious about your nuts. Yeah, you're yeah, crossing I'm your like, legs. <laughs> and you going to be at the house. I'm going to wear a coat for now. Standing there in front of the microwave <laughs> covering up his junk. <laughs> A baseball cup for now made out of uh, aluminum. To it just block magnifies the, it. Block the rays. You gotta be lead. Lead. Okay. Mm -hmm. what, what's what's made? What's those sleeves that you put your credit card in to block the? Signal? I think they use aluminum. That shit ain't real. Oh, I was about to say I had to you sit. Think you go. You ever had, my sack uh, right you ever had like a X-ray or something? Yeah. They always use lead. Like the apron you got put oh, on the cover, right. like, yeah, they always use legs. That big, that big bulletproof vest. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead, Goose. Moving, Moving on. on. Since we talking about crazy stuff, or, or no, since we talking about criminals and drugs. Oh, it activities. wasn't fake badges because a couple weeks later there was a bunch of cops and. <laughs> <laughs> oh, somebody said fake badges. Yeah, one of them was you fake can't badges. win, I man. I can look at a fake. I, I know it's a fake badge when I see it. Ain't no. <laughs> they had the 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 gear in their car. It wasn't no regular ass rental car. You can't win. <laughs> I know. <laughs> he got a fake bag. We're undercover. Yeah, if I walked up and just I ain't see no laptops and shit and radios and all that, I'd have <laughs> been like, get the fuck up out of here. A, a prop. <laughs> a plastic a prop bag. Badge out. Fisher Price. Yeah. <laughs> he got the little plastic handcuffs. You know the yeah. one that you had when you were a kid with the little rubber key. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, anyway, dude. since we talking about these drug guys, drug dealers. Why, as Americans, do we just love supporting the bad guy when we know he's the bad guy and he's literally, like, just messing up your community? For example, um, what's his name? El Chapo. What's the other one? Escobar. Yeah, Pablo Escobar. Why do we Michael idolize? Guy. Why do we idolize these people and be like free? Oh, uh, free Meech, free free Larry Hoover. When these guys are like, they sold hardcore drugs to our community that really just fucked up our they community. They traffic rocks to the community, and we be out here <laughs> free free these free them free so they can. Create another game. Yeah, they done killed nineteen of your family members that was strung out. I don't, I don't get it. I don't they understand. Did, and it. first, uh, we was talking about it. We was like, why does the black community do? It? I'm like, no, nah, every community does this. Yeah, they glorify and put these criminals on a pedestal and want to get them out of jail. Like, you know how much crime these people done done? You know how much, how many lives they done messed up? It ain't just. It ain't just other people like them lives that they done messed yeah, up. Some yeah. innocent people done got slaughtered and murdered and, and drunk, strung out too. Yeah. I don't get it. It's uh, even coming up. I know all through high school, I don't know why. Al Capone had a, like a real big, uh, real big run of just like extreme popularity, at least around the people that I was hanging around and stuff. One of my boys even had a shirt with, you know, is, you know, cause he ain't never smile. Mm. You know, he just had a shirt. You know, he had, you know, Capone had the hat tilted just in black and white. Yeah. And he was like, yeah, it's just, this is a hard shirt, man. This is dope. I was like, you know, he hated black people, right? <laughs> like, That's the other thing. He did not like black people. Like, this dude is <laughs> just a criminal. Why Why you walk around with this man on your shirt? <laughs> What's his name? Uh, Lucas. Frank Lucas. Frank Lucas. Yeah. Like, these guys, first of all, these guys be snitching on the other guys so they don't get that much time. And we still be just like, boy, yeah. it was a big dope, dope dealer in the world. Yeah. Why? Oh, but this, <laughs> this man done killed, had people killed. The things they do get people killed. Uh, and we like free, free them. I, I'm mentioning this because it came across my feed talking about be, Big Meech going to be home in a few weeks or something. And I'm like, Okay. Yeah. So? Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, like, why is that? <laughs> why is that why why is that important to our community that a drug dealer right. is coming home? But I don't under I I don't understand it yeah. at all. Uh, successful kingpin drug dealers you don't know about. <laughs> that's, that's true. <laughs> you don't know about them. You only know about the ones that got caught. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Got caught, killed, whatever, hung, strung up. And I might need to do my research because maybe some of y'all know. Uh, the Larry Hoovers, the Frank Lucases, the Escobars, the Big Drug Boys, they might have done more uh, for the community than we know about. No, but, they don't. But what I do know. They did more harm than good. Yes. <laughs> I know that for a fact. And I don't know if you've seen, uh, what was it? Was it Franklin? Uh, Amer oh, S Saint, Snow. Uh, Franklin Snake. Yeah. Franklin Saint. Yeah. These are like based off real life type situations. Yeah, let's situations. break off uh, Ricky Ro Rick Ross. Yeah. Freeway, Ricky Rose. Freeway Ricky Ross yeah. was an action. That uh, Snowfall was based off that real life story. They The government used this man to sell <laughs> drugs. I'm surprised that they actually let that fly on, like told that story on TV of how the government used him to sell drugs. Because we don't care. We don't give a damn. We, People don't give a damn. Uh, no. <laughs> if they we said that, they ain't going to care. Just no. go on put the truth out there. <laughs> it got money, drugs, and, it, and it's about black people. Yeah. <laughs> Them black folk going to love this. That's why Trump can goddamn put out a goddamn shoe. And I guarantee to, you black to, folk going to buy it. To pay for his lawsuit. Yes. This man lost a lawsuit. He got to pay 400 and some million dollars. <laughs> he said, let me drop a shoe let to pay for this. That look, like some, that look like some donk and some Nikes. Them things is ugly as shit. Watch him. Watch him buy it. No, they already sold out. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> that's what I don't understand. Man, if I ever see anybody Woo. black wearing them shoes, I might throw eggs at them. <laughs> no, I'm going to make sure I step on them. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't see. Sir, you came from all the way down there. Oh, I didn't see you. But, sir, you, you came from. You I'm, jogged. I told you I did me. not see your shoe. <laughs> <laughs> you know that Instagram video of the dude on the uh, subway? Somebody said the black people found I'm sure some did. Or they going to say they did or they yeah, going to make got, it. You got some coonery out there. But there is a video of a young black guy with him on. And he's like, man, these are they're comfortable. Blase, blase. He's like, man, get out of here. Come on, man. Seriously? Anyway. Uh, uh, oh. That Instagram video, of that guy on the train, and he step on that dude's shoes. He's like, no, 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 no. Step on them again. Step on my shoes again. See what happened. You seen that? No, I no. seen it. <laughs> you step on them again. Woo! It's going to be some he trouble. Pulled, he pulled the uh, uh, Ric Flair out. Man, of he was, this dude was going crazy. Have y'all seen that video? If you've seen it, you know what I'm talking uh, about. I'm going to have to go I'm look gonna, I'm going to have to pull it up so you can see it. He's like, step on my shoes again. Sucker. Anyway. They said the insurrection sixes. <laughs> <laughs> hey, oh, man. They got here. I wonder how much they, they probably 400. I don't even know. I seen a bunch. Three something? I seen a bunch of uh, Trump I them. just to burn them. I ain't going to do that because you just still giving them the money. You still paying for that lawsuit. Uh, that's true. <laughs> Buy them and return them or something. Anyway, moving on, since we talking about these crazy- I'll burn somebody else's. <laughs> yep, yeah. <laughs> give me your shoe and take them off. What side of me is? It don't matter. <laughs> give me them damn shoes. Sucker. Snap uh, them off their feet and burn them. You can resell for 1200 Woo. Yeah, they going to pay for that lawsuit. Woo. Man, I be seeing, you know, I be, I don't, I've been slowed down a whole lot on buying shoes. Some of these damn shoes is stupid. Oh. I be seeing shoes for ten, twenty thousand dollars. I'm like, who yeah. the hell? They be going. It's paying twenty thousand dollars for. If I had twenty thousand dollars to waste, I'm not spending it on no damn shoes. Them shoes, um, conventions, and uh, they don't lost their mind. They be bringing hundreds and thousands of dollars to buy out people's shoes, worn shoes, used shoes. It's crazy. That's man. ridiculous. People got bread out here now. Uh, and for a Nike, <clears throat> on top of that, it's a Nike. Yeah. Yeah. That's all it is, is a Nike. That's all it is, Playboy. Go ahead, Goo. Yeah, man. Uh, I'm trying to see how I'm going to roll right into this one. Just say it. In boxing, <laughs> you do have to roll with the punches. You feel me? You feel me? This fool, Jake Paul. <laughs> Jake, I'm coming. Hey, right now, uh, 1036, March the 6th, 2024. I'm calling out Jake Paul. If y'all know him, let him know. I am willing to fight this man. You hear me? 
I will step in the ring with Jake Paul. Jake Paul, you got to get past me before you fight anybody else. I'm saying that because this man called out Canelo to fight. He's saying he can beat Carnelo in Canelo. Canelo. I said Carnelo. Yeah, it's Canelo. Canelo. Yeah. Tell he, the people who Canelo is. Canelo is the best of the best in I think 147 or one no not 147. Yeah, 147. He, he weigh more. How much oh, is 150, he? One fifty. One fifty something. He ain't that big. Uh, Jake, no. Jake is, I think, light heavy though. Oh, is he? I think he's like one seventy something. Cause he he about six foot. Mm. He, I he bigger than Carnello. Yeah, Canelo. Anyway, I ain't calling him out because that man been training for like three four <laughs> years now. <laughs> so I ain't. <laughs> I, I will beat Jake Paul, but I beat I beat your ass. <laughs> When you, and when you answer me, you best to come with the check. <laughs> I need that check. Yeah, I get in the ring for a check. That check. Uh, this man, he been running five miles a day <laughs> in training <laughs> for five years now. Goose like, oh, whoop you. hold on, I'll whoop his ass, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna knock you out this next one. I got a seven year old and a two year old. I've been goddamn running every day since my baby was born, for real. And I'm just athletic. I'm I I adapt to my surroundings. I know you how. Go. You know what I'm saying? I'm just yeah. I can I can still move. Yeah. I proved that the other day. Yeah, to myself I, by accident. Know. I said, oh, okay. And then it's Jake Paul. <laughs> like, come on, man. See. Yeah, I don't know. He started off trolling people or something, didn't he? Well, well, him and his brother made video, YouTube videos, just random outrageous videos, and that's uh, just how they got on. But he ain't a real. He ain't ready. He ain't ready for me. <laughs> put up the check. Hey, put, put up, up the check, and I'm there. Put it up, uh, Jake. This is my trainer Come right here. This is my trainer. I got you. Yeah, I can train you all day. That's what I'm saying. We need about. I say uh, fifty mil to do me good, all right? And I step these, in the ring. Justice, yeah, because I need to pay for the you camp. Pay the trainer. How long you think the training camp need to be? By? I got you. Give me three weeks. I got you. Three weeks. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought you. I say three months. I this got you three. Right, we we'll do. <laughs> we we'll do six months. We we'll do six months. Get him good and ready. Yeah. Let me get there with you. I need to <laughs> get some, clean my system out. Uh, also. Jake Paul, I thought he was on some drugs because he calling out Canelo. But this young lady, I protect black women by all costs. But this young girl named Clarissa Shields, she's also a beast. She dominates women in the boxing ring. She's going to call out, <clears throat> uh, I don't forgot his name, Thomas, uh, Keith Thurman. Yeah, Keith Thurman. <clears throat> she done called out Keith Thurman. Keith Thurman is known one piece, one hit a quitter. He's knocking out grown yeah. men, and this young lady thinks she can handle Keith Thurman. I'm not saying a woman can't handle a man in the boxing ring, but when you have an elite boxing, a dude that's an elite boxer, you're not just elite. That's the key word. You're not boxing just the average Joe. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then the average Joe man is going to have manly strength anyway. But then you add elite boxing where he knows how to distribute his power and his punches. You, you, you have no chance. No chance at all boxing this man. Yeah, no, nah, she, she should not do that. It'd be a lose-lose for him regardless. Yeah, you can't. Getting in the ring. I mean, I could see, just spar with the dude. Like, why you got to fight? I don't understand why you can't just spar with him. Um, not to take anything from her. Look, I wouldn't step in the ring with her. Ain't no telling what this woman's capable of. <laughs> like, I'd step in the ring with you, too. <laughs> with her? For that chick. Mm -hmm. I'd step in the ring with yeah, that's you, That's what too. he going to do. You're going to be like, oh, I'm going to feel bad for not going <laughs> to. you just going to wake up. <laughs> What happened, y'all? Who hit me? <laughs> I'll wake up in the podcast. Oh, oh. Come like, on, Goose, you all right? <laughs> man, what happened? You, it happened again, man. You blacked out every since that fight. You, you ain't get, been right. What you want to get off your chest? Oh, oh, oh. How do you get this off my chest? 
Yeah. How I get here? Yeah. <laughs> like, man, your memory been spotty. You ain't since old girl knocked you out, Goose. I'm sorry. <laughs> Nah, oh. she uh she don't need to be. Look, there's a reason there's a separation in uh sports, man. Sports, when it comes yeah. to these things, uh, that's why you got a lot of people that uh you got a lot of people that disagree with transgender uh individuals stepping into sports, uh particularly on the women's side. It's it causes it's a it's controversy around it because men are stronger naturally, man. It's, we're yeah. not shit. I understand we're you identify as as, as 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 something different, but you have the strength of what you used to identify. I'm trying to be offensive, but men are stronger. That's why there's no women in the NFL. You got these 300 pound men that can sprint faster than some dogs. You saw what Cam Newton did to. These Two other grown, grown men. men. And that's why, y'all, I'm back on my fitness. I've been in the garage lifting big, big weight. Because ain't no man going to do me like Cam Newton. Cam Newton, you fired something up underneath me when you did that, that, that boy. I'm, I'm telling you. We go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Cam Newton, a professional yeah. athlete. Like I said, his man's, what is he, like 6'4", 6'5"? He's 6'5", 6'6", 260. Meaning this man got 20 pounds on me. And people look at me all the time. You big. Imagine looking at that dude and he's in shape. Yeah. I'm not in the best shape. I ain't in bad shape because I've been, I've been in there working out too. Mm-hmm. Uh, So for her to step in, I'm like, nah, don't do it. Just go to a heavier. Is, is she in the heaviest weight class? I think she weighed about as much as him. She a, she a thick girl. Mm, so <clears throat> she's in heavyweight like when it comes to the women's. No, I don't She's think not, so. Uh-huh. I don't know. If you instead of doing that, go to a heavier weight class and start dominating. Yeah. You know, uh, I don't know. That's a I I wouldn't be able to do it if I was a professional boxer is to box with a woman. But that's just me. Maybe that's my flaw of being, of being a southern gentleman. I I wouldn't do it. Well, like you said, Keith Thurman, she's one sixty five. So that's uh, let's see what weight class that is. Yeah, uh, Iron Mike Tyson is still terrifying. Yeah. Just watching him train at how old is he? He pushing sixty, ain't he? Uh huh. Light middleweight, she's, she's light, light middleweight. Uh-huh. Go to light heavy yeah. and fight some of them girls, ladies. Excuse me. <clears throat> Uh, what's his name? Cam Newton did all that without throwing a punch. <laughs> by the way, yeah, just, yeah, yeah, just, just whatever, whatever. I think she has to. Uh, yeah, I think that's the perfect idea. Go up and wait, dominate. Yeah, Mike fifty-seven. Because what's his name? Um, uh, uh, all the great boxers have dominated in different weight classes. Pacquiao, yeah. I think, has done it in eight different weight classes. Yeah, so. Go up and wait and see. How is it that many different happening? weight classes? Man, they be having I don't light, understand. middle, 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 WBA. Well to, no, all all just, <laughs> I don't be. understand how is that many weight classes. Yeah. Oh, but she's also, kudos to you too, Clarissa. She's into MMA now. She's had her first octagon like I said, fight. I would not step in the ring with her. Yeah. I would be she real beat, with you. She beat this lady up. But I want to see her when she fights a, a jiu-jitsu, somebody that grapples. Uh-huh. And Tackling gets, grapple. Uh, yeah. yeah and get the and peel. choking up. Yeah. Tackling grapple. <laughs> I didn't see that. I was uh, quite funny, though. <laughs> um, yeah, no. Nah, like, I'm sure she's lethal. But when you have the – When no you matching time. with yeah. somebody that's equally as lethal, you know – yeah, I, somebody that knows how to throw a punch and take a punch, and it's a man that's that's been champion. Like this dude ain't no push. That's what my issue was. She was calling him a pushover. She was like, oh. he's done for. Like he's a nobody basically now. And I'm like, how are you even talking like this about this man? What has he done to you? He had something. I don't even know how that came out of her mouth. When this dude has dominated, the only person he's lost to is Pacquiao. And that's Pacquiao. Thank you. (laughs) 
If anyway. he lost to somebody else, I don't know. The man is he has less than three losses on his under his belt for a fact. But you know, keep on dreaming, Clarissa. Uh, yeah, shoot good, for the good stars. Luck. Shoot for the stars, absolutely. We uh, rooting for you, but be careful, please. Jake, I'm gonna give you seventy two hours to Goose, respond. Goose wants to smoke, Jake. Yeah. So you need to hurry up. Do something. I come to the gym and spa spa with you or something. You know what I'm saying? And I want to be there to see yeah. this. <laughs> Yeah, when I put you on your ass, you feel me? All right. Uh, man, I guess today is all about, like, people might talking like they on drugs and doing drugs. Let's talk about this teacher. Well, she's not even a teacher. She's a daycare employee. Ooh, this is the woman I want to get in the ring with. Put her in the ring. I'm fighting all day. This Octagon, lady. Octagon, square, it don't matter. This lady. <laughs> this lady was putting... <laughs> Sleep patches on the kids in her daycare or in the daycare that she worked. Now, she didn't put it on the kids right before bedtime. This lady was putting these patches on the kids as soon as they came into the room, like all day. So they're on these patches all day to control their mood. Keeping them drowsy. Calming Without them telling the parents. The parents don't know about this. The only way the parents found out was one parent showed up unannounced and was like, what is this sticker? Then looked around and saw that all the other kids had this sticker on and did her research and found out they were uh, sleeping patches, mood patches that alter, that will alter and damage kids' hormones. Some of them are going through withdrawals. <clears throat> I want to talk about uh, when we first had McKinley, we had to find a daycare. And we dropped McKinley off at um, this grandma's house. She was just taking care of kids in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Man, the anxiety that we had leaving our child with this person we don't know yeah i mean what you feel and you at work like man please don't call me or uh, please let my baby be fine when i get back over there and then to come to a daycare that's uh established and um you know you paying and you just you let your guards down and just give these people your kids and to come and find that literally this lady's drugging the kids. Yeah, that's infuriating. We done went through the childbirth. We got all these shots. Nine months of this, no sleep. And you're doing something that could potentially mess my child up. Yeah. Man. No, nah, this... There ain't a punishment harsh enough. This is the problem. Yeah, you ain't. Oh, well, we gonna, I'm going to tell you the problem. Remind me after you bring up the next one. But these, uh, as a, the, anytime our kids are anywhere, we going to randomly pop up. Mm. We are royalty pop-up people. We will pop up if our kids are somewhere. Hey, they know it. Did anybody that got our kids at a daycare or the school, they know. We just going to come. Oh, yeah, you're supposed to call first. I know. We're my child. Yep. I got to give them something. I got to tell them something. We just going to pop up. Um, but stuff like this, man, I pray to God I'm never in the situation of one of these parents. Yeah. Because uh, I had to go back. I'm fixing what I said earlier. Patreon heard it. Uh <laughs> Yeah, I heard it. Yeah. I will. Uh, yeah, I pray I'm never in that situation. I'm not sure how I will react. I don't even know if I'd be able to plead insanity because they'd be like, no, this was planned. Even though it was a short amount of time, you clearly had to think of some of this stuff because this is very creative, sir. Like, you right. Like, <laughs> Go ahead, Goose. But that's the thing, too. Um, see a comment here say greed of money. She was just a worker. She It wasn't her daycare. So... It's like you're literally doing this to 
to try to make your day easier. You yeah, because you drug, can't handle kids. Because you can't handle the kids. Like, let people know you can't handle the kids. Put me in a different position or you need some more help or literally stop coming to work because uh, I always tell y'all <laughs> I'm a new person and you have to think before you react and mm-hmm. do things. Hey, just calm down. It can't yeah. be that serious. It ain't going to be that serious. He has yet to prove it, but he be saying I know. I don't prove my <laughs> – <laughs> I rebu- rebuke that <laughs> statement. I have I have um, proven myself many times over at this point. Yeah, yeah. But we proud of you, good. To his point, <laughs> certain situations, I pray that I never have to yeah. be involved in because I I would snap like if somebody would spit on me. I'd be saying, oh, man, just walk away. I couldn't. I couldn't. I would, yeah. I hope and pray that never happens. But literally, my babies could be in my hand, and it's like, take, take, thank you. I'm about to try to rip your face off, even yeah. if you Cam Newton Uh But if I find out that you're drugging my kids just, just because, it's just because, yeah, you have. There has to be some type of consequence. Uh, my algorithm sends me all type of videos, but people in different countries, literally, when they steal something, they get they be getting beat. They mm-hmm. hands get, literally, they have people put their hands out and they will shoot their hands because you stole something. Chop your foot off, chop your finger off. Something's going to happen to to you that's, for doing yeah, this. That's what I was about to say. The the people ain't scared of the punishment. Yes, the problem. That person, that girl is about to go get another job at another daycare somewhere else. She's probably gonna open her own damn daycare. We, it's the U.S. need to start doing some eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth type of punishment for everybody. And everybody will, you will see some shit slow down. Mm-hmm. Problem is, U.S. is too racist, but they do need to do something. People oh, that's need, true too, people need it'll to be, be us. Te- they, yeah, yeah. But ah, man, woo. But yes, yeah, people I'm ain't glad scared. I'm not the parent that found that out. People ain't, yeah, yeah. Like the next dude, people ain't. Woo, goodness. Oh yeah, yeah. Today, y'all, we on these drugs. Uh, moving on, but moving on to another drug situation. This guy in Oregon, I got this from the Patreon. Thank you, Patreon. I appreciate that. Y'all come through with these topics. Yeah. This guy stuff. in Oregon, <laughs> his 12-year-old daughter's daughter has a sleepover. He drugs her friends with some type of... Um, sedative drug in their mango smoothies okay so as they're downstairs in the basement doing what girls do when they do sleepovers uh it got a little late so he goes down matter of fact he goes down repeatedly up and down up and down checking on them i guess trying to figure out when they gonna knock out so he could probably do whatever he wanted to do um one girl is sleep uh, another girl is wide awake and she's observing all of this. So the dad will come down, put his finger underneath the girl's noses to make sure they're breathing, wave over their faces to make sure they're knocked out. You know, the girl that's awake, though, calls her mom or well, texts her mom and she's texting her. Hey, I won't answer because I'm scared. Please come and get me. Please, 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 please. The mama's knocked out. She doesn't respond. So she calls, texts another family member. The other family member answers, goes to the parents' house, grabs her parents, and then they come to the house she's at. Now get this. You don't want me to be the person. They get there, and the dad is like, don't disturb them. They're downstairs asleep. My child is in your house, sleep, supposedly, and you you telling me not to come get my child? You're not letting me cross that threshold inside that house to come get my baby? 
I'm I'm locked up. That that night, dude getting ran oh, yeah. through. I'm yeah. talking about molly walked, drug, all through that house. I'm about to smash you up. Why? No. I'm justified at this point. I don't care what court yeah, system at, you put me in. At this point, you hold my child hostage. Yes, man. I'm not. Mr. Goosby, did, you, you use excessive force. No, 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 no. I use necessary force, Your Honor. No, nah, it was unnecessary because I didn't do enough. It, it, and, and, and if <laughs> like, if you give he, me a chance to do it again. Walk. Well, he shouldn't be. Yeah. Mm. So, each girl, because the dad said he didn't do anything. Well, they all went and got tested, and all of them were tested positive for this sedative drug that he used um, in their mango smoothies. Man. So now he's bonded out of jail, and he's going to go to court, hopefully, behind this. You never know, because yeah. you know, uh, people be getting slapped on the wrist when they, uh, another shade. But this guy literally drugged minor 12 year olds he should at least get 30 this is it, imagine imagine how long he's been doing this ain't no telling he might have done this to his own child yeah but Look, man the worst thing situations like that if you do make it by the time the police get there the worst thing you could do is get out on bond best thing for you to do if this was somebody that i know but, is keep your ass in jail Please keep your ass in jail. I promise you. He ain't going to fare no better if he does get convicted. You know, they don't be liking child molesters and stuff in jail. That's true. That I, Hopefully they found out about exactly what he did. They going to find out. Convicted. If he don't get, the other thing, if I was involved, worst thing that could happen to him is not get convicted. Yeah. I'm beating your ass, man. You no, can't, it's going to be a routine. Yeah. You can't. <sighs> I'm sorry. I always say I'm sorry for women because men are just, they, I don't know. I, I don't understand this. As, <laughs> why? 12 year old girls, you have a daughter, man. How does this even click in your head to do this? What's it? Oh, they're having a sleepover. We're going to drug them. What's who's talking to you? What demon? Man. What what's happening for you to even for this to just develop in your system? So sick, mother, he's sick. <laughs> you got look, man. You have in America. You have all and type I, of le outlets. Not in a sick in a in a way of oh he needs help. No, that ain't type sick. I'm talking about. Yeah, I'm. A, I would love to help him. Mm. You got all type of let outlets in in America. Let's be bringing up these types to get my blood pressure up. I know we need we need to talk about it because it's true. So y'all, some of y'all let y'all kids spend the night at your friend's house, and don't that's, be y'all that, don't be even knowing the parents. That's my question: Is do they are they these girls or their parents? Not saying that they're wrong, but like, how well do you know? him i know your daughter knows their daughter but how well do you know the actual parent it's people right now that ask at this point at the age of 14 we'll let we, marcus has slept over at one of his friends house one time mm. they ask oh the twins can stay they nah mm -mm. nah because we don't know y'all like it nope ain't nothing against them it's just we don't know them like that McKin if it was greg and them that's a different story yeah but these are the people that they go to school with we just know y'all through school nah i'm good mm -mm. We we go to uh, sporting events, and you'll see parents, hey, hey, and they're sporting. You know, I still don't know you after this sporting event. Mm -hmm. I might see you every Saturday, but I don't know what's at your yeah, house. We'll what do a play you date do. at our house. You can drop them off. Now we'll be nah, there. Nah, yeah, yeah, I'm going to be there. You got some wine or something, beer? Yeah, I'll come over there. Ain't no way in hell. What's crazy is back in the day, well, I guess because we were boys, uh, my parents rarely checked but they should have checked because uh, we were white boy Ryan. That, that, that was his name. His, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Man, when I tell you, his granddaddy had a 
um, library of porn. I'm talking about his granddad was, he had the porn station. <laughs> like, you would turn on the TV, yeah. porn. It wasn't static now. No, it just, it's like, porn. Oh, he paid, he paid he for it. He paid for this. He had cable porn. Yeah. You Man, couldn't try to see a nipple through the static. From <laughs> elementary school, y'all. From elementary school. He passed on. Everybody passed on that I'm talking about. This man, we'll be upstairs. He'll be downstairs watching porn. <laughs> Surround sound porn. <laughs> he, we'll go downstairs. Grandpa will be down there. Sleep. sleep. And we'll be right there in front of the camp, in front of the TV like, dang. <laughs> That's messed dang. up though as a it be elementary school. Oh, you know that? oh, it was. It was. And then go upstairs in his room. Oh, no, no, no. Not upstairs in the room. Downstairs in the back room. He had. Uh, and he kept the door locked. Yeah. When he kept it locked. He ain't always keep it locked. Library. P- porn magazines. I'm talking about. God dang. Man. You sure he wasn't a producer, like editing? Hell no. Nah. <laughs> he used to fix. That's, he had his own bit. He fixed lawnmowers in the garage <laughs> with the cigar. And he ass. always, uh, dang, what was his first name? I don't even know. I just called him grandpa. But we've been knowing him since elementary school. My parents ain't never went there and been in his house. Or been nothing. in his house, talked to them or nothing. The f- first time they would have stepped foot in there, they would have been like, what nah. is going on in here? It's yeah. crazy. So I had other friends' parents that were crazy. And it's like, man, my parents would never. And it was almost like a um, – well, that's how I started realizing people live totally different from what you live. Everybody live different. Like black people are not a monolith. That's what no. I've been trying to say when people go, y'all didn't eat this, y'all didn't do that, y'all didn't have it. Because everybody ain't the same. Man, and this boy would eat, they would eat pizza. They would, man, they had the worst diet. Man. They like, took care of us, though. We 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 ate, we slept, we took showers, everything. They provided. But when it came down to that that porn stuff, oh, that's the end when it was boy. crazy. Like, we used to have sleepover stuff, but it was this was our family. This was our cousins and stuff. So mm. I grew up a little different. Uh, I never stayed over a friend's house. It was always a cousin's house. No. They didn't even have friends over. It was our other cousin. So our parents, one of our parents grew up with the other. Like, we all knew each other. Mm. Um, but, yeah, if for my child, Sian Kai, they won't be staying at no friend's house. Mm. Like, because I don't know, outside of, like I said, y'all – the Nora and them, maybe Quinn. We don't know none of their friends' parents like mm-hmm. that. Like we know them through the kids of oh, we see them at events, we see them at a birthday party, but I don't know these people like that. And specifically, a reason like that is just like even if you do know the parents, who else are they? Who are the parents involved with? Yep. Oh yeah, it's little little Eric's granddad. He stays with him, but what is he into? Yeah. He into porn. Yeah. Like, like, you know what I'm saying? This is like, it's a, yeah, we don't be letting our kids stay nowhere. Yeah. McKinley and Makai will never, as long as they in my house, they, until they're 16, 17, and they know for a fact how to say no and um, call and defend themselves, no. They will never be spending the night any, anywhere, as long as I have uh, as long as I have breath in my lungs. But yeah, him, I want to get in the ring with old girl, the teacher that patched them little kids up with sleeping. I want to get in the ring with I want to get in the octagon ring with her. I, 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 touche. Yeah, uh, yeah. I anyway. concur with that. It's crazy, man. Uh, I'm trying it, to close it out. Okay, man, I know you're trying to close it out. I just want to say, man, it's a crazy world out here, man. This, this is, this shit is crazy. It is. You got, you got healthy, I'm going to say sane, because obviously these people have lived to the point that they're working, have families, paying bills. These are sane individuals doing sinister things. So uh, stay village, vigilant, 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 vigilant. Yeah. That's the word of the day, y'all.
Y'all see how I, I, yeah. I brought that all Yeah, when back. you brought it up the first time, it, the way you said it, it I don't like, know what I was that saying. That is not a word. <laughs> <laughs> see, we all got to grow, man. We got to grow. Yeah, yeah, Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, that's cool. You was going to let them know where they can find you. You can catch me on IG. That's G-O-O-L-Z-B-Y, Building with Goose on YouTube. Uh, you can buy my merch at underrippedmerch.com. Um, and you can check us out on Patreon at patreon.com slash. slash I'm not a lawyer, but look at you halfway there, good. Oh, yeah. yeah, we growing. Hey, y'all can find me on Instagram at Marcus on the Gram, Facebook at Marcus on the Book, TikTok at Tank Don't Talk. Y'all can find my beard and body butter called Man Shit, and you can go to M A N S H Y T. Check that out. And if you're listening, you can watch this on YouTube, Tanks of TV, Let Us Tell It podcast. And if you're watching, you can listen to this across all podcast streaming platforms. Mm -hmm. And uh, is that it? I want to say I appreciate everybody and the support. The tour is going great. The energy is great. Love it. Absolutely. Make yeah. sure y'all see them on tour. Links is on Angel and Kev's page. Y'all can see that. Uh, I think that's it. Yeah, that's it. We'll holler back at y'all. Patreon, y'all stick around. Y'all have a good one, fam. Adios.